All right, everybody. Welcome back. We're going to be talking about the Dungeon Crawl project and basically drawing the actual, um, you know, the room in which this crawl, <laughs> this adventure takes place. So I have here the, you know, game function. This is part of our mode framework. So if you were to look at sort of my draw function way down here, and we have our you know, different uh, functions for drawing what's happening on the screen. So our draw function is subdivided, right? We have our intro, our game, our pause, our game over, and a single variable, the mode variable, to determine which one of these. So when we're actually playing the game, we're going to assume that, you know, we're going to conspire to make it such that the mode will be equal to whatever game is, and then it'll call the game function. So here's my game function. I'll go back there. Uh, so this, I just have a bunch of sub functions. These are just functions I wrote, void functions that will do the different things. You could put all your code right here in the game function if you want to, but it's worthwhile to break this down. That way you can comment things out. You can turn off a whole section without you know, breaking stuff. And there's other reasons too. Just being organized is, is a beautiful thing uh, when you're programming. Think about how often we make mistakes because of our organization, right? Our braces didn't line up or whatever it is. And if you want to avoid those problems, then stay organized. So first off, uh, we're going to see the drawing the room. And then we'll take a look at drawing the game objects. So for drawing the room, it's pretty basic right now, this version of it. You know, I'm just going to draw my corners. It's just like a big X, the uh, two lines that go through uh, the two corners. Or one goes through the you know, top, left, and bottom right, and through the center. The other one is the opposite diagonal through the center. And then I draw the floor, which is just a, you know, a rectangle on the, that kind of covers it. You'll notice that I'm using percentages. Uh, I figured just I'll just go ahead and use percentages. It's not absolutely necessary or anything, but it keeps my uh, math within the program, so I don't actually do it. I don't have to do the calculations. I can just be like, "Hey, processing, you figure out what what that size is." I know I want it to be about eighty percent of the total screen, but what those numbers are, I don't care. Like you just figure it out. So that's um, that's what I'm doing. But if you have hard coded numbers, that's totally fine. So that's, um, that's basically it. Oh, I got some other junk there. <laughs> Don't worry about that. So that's my, my room. And then the draw game objects. That's just going to be my while loop that's going to go through all the different game objects. So that's basically like asteroids. It's our really our driving loop, uh, the heart of our game engine. So if I go to my main tab, I'll just remind you that I'll have things like, where is it here? Yeah, I have my game object list. So an array list of game objects, I'm going to have to create that in the setup, right? I do that uh, basically here. And I also sort of make my hero object and add it to that list. So that's going to be the only thing that's in that list right now. But I want to set this up so that if I add anything to this list, it'll just start animating. So that's going to be almost exactly the same as what is inside of our Asteroids project. Very similar. You'll, you'll recognize it. I'll go over there now and I'll show you. So that draw game objects, it's really just a, you know, it's just a separate function right here. Uh, it's just, a, oh, I made it a for loop. <laughs> it didn't have to be. Uh, I'll just convert this actually quickly to a while loop and then I'll show you the difference between the two. So this is the while loop version of it. And then that will look uh, a little bit better. Uh, yeah, does this look familiar? <laughs> this is sort of the, the structure of our, you know, loop that goes through all our objects, right? We start at the first object, you know, um, our page zero of our array list, if an array list is a binder. And we're going to go to the end of the binder, so to speak, and we're going to get a page out of there, page zero first. We'll take a look at whatever object is on page zero, and we'll show it and act it. And we'll check to see if it's got no hit points. If it does, we'll remove it. And then if we don't remove it, then we'll move on to the next page. And we don't want to do that if we uh, do remove it, because if we remove it, we're already on the next page. The way that processing and Java works is it renumbers. If you remove something out of a list, it renumbers all the other indices of those items, the page numbers, if you will. So uh, you don't have to I++. So this is the while loop version of it. And that's not really all that different from uh, anything that you've seen before. It's exactly like the asteroids. Uh, there is 
Uh, you saw that my code was a for loop earlier, so if you would like to take a look at what that is, then please continue. But you can also just kind of stop the video now and just be content with a while loop. It's not part of the curriculum. Uh, but a for loop is a convenient loop that does make this a little bit cleaner. And it does do one thing that I, I kind of like a lot, and that is uh, puts the I++ automatically at the end. So here's the, the for loop. Basically, we change while to for, and we just take you know, these three things, the condition, the initialization, and the I++, the increment, and we all put that in one line. So that's kind of a convenient thing to do. And then this always happens at the beginning, the first time we run the loop. This always happens at the end, and then there's our condition. Uh, if we, this always happens at the end, that's a little awkward because sometimes we don't want an I++. So we always have to I++ plus plus now, but instead of making a big deal about that, I can just I minus minus if I remove something. So I keep my I variable uh, accurate to the page count. So this is just a different way of doing it. The for loop is designed to be a little bit condensed and cleaner for doing that kind of stuff. But you know, you just keep doing your while loop if you prefer while loops, that's okay. For loop, if you prefer for loops, also good. So there you go, that's me drawing the world and all the objects that are in it. You know, these two things are happening all the time. And you can see we're going to add to that later on. We're going to add that light layer that's sort of like the fog of war or whatever you call it. Uh, there's going to be some controls that we'll draw on the screen. Um, that mini map and other sort of information like how many lives or hit points you have. Those kind of details we can draw on the screen as well. So, um, but that's this is basically all you need to know for now. These two and these two are just coming in a later video. So don't worry about those. So thanks, folks, for watching that, and I hope you enjoyed it. Hope it makes sense, and we'll talk to you soon.